and they found that those that use more porn uh, six months later than a year later, they did far worse on their academics. So that's the only longitudinal study I've seen. That could on be carpal tunnel though as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get into this because of religion. It's just a very strange story where some guys about 10 years ago started showing up on my wife's forum, which had nothing to do with porn, and they were complaining and saying, hey, uh, my penis isn't working and I think it's porn. Well, over the next few years, these men recovered from porn-induced sexual dysfunctions, and eventually we started to write about it because we felt compelled because a lot of the men were suicidal they thought they were broken for life and yet they healed so we felt like we needed to get the word out and that's how all this started uh, a lot of people responded the, the critics they would say well you know what gary wilson is just taking people who are chronic abusers of pornography it's not indicative of men who watch porn on the internet the average male in 2017 so his information is largely irrelevant uh what would you say to those those critics who who dabble in in pornography and are there negative consequences if any well, first of all, the only way to assess if there's negative consequences for you is to take a time out, and that is to stop using porn for several months and see if there's any changes. There's only been five studies which have had non-addicts, for the most part, stop using porn, and all of them found significant changes. Some of them could think better, others found their relationships more satisfying, and others healed from sexual problems. So those are the only five that have done it. But I think you need to step back and look at what's going on more broadly. You know, think about erectile dysfunction. Let's get on something that's sort of solid. Okay. I'd like to uh, think about it in the abstract, sounds, not so much yeah, the solid. We're gonna it doesn't talk sound about solid it. at all. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the problem. So if we look at erectile dysfunction rates, for men under 40, historically they've been between two and 3% up until about 2008. And then they started to climb to the point where now studies, about seven studies between 2010 and 2017 found erectile dysfunction rates in young men as high as 35%. Okay. So that's a jump of 1,000%. And there's been no other variable that has changed in the last 10 to 15 years that could cause erectile dysfunction rate. In young men, except the, so, smart, smart, so, except the smartphone. Well, I was going to say it's not like their, their penis didn't break because <laughs> of GMO corn. Are we sure about that? Well, uh, the older men are also eating GMO corn, and their erectile dysfunction Damn. rates haven't risen quite as much. <laughs> That's one what for has, you, Mr. Wilson. That's one for you. And what has changed is tube sites, and tube sites were invented in about 2007, and that was a real game changer. Where you now had free streaming porn, short little clips, and you could put up about 20 tabs and just click from tab to tab while you're masturbating. And if you got bored, you could click to a new genre, a new fetish, and get your arousal up. And so this is what really changed the game. And we had older men, men in their 50s, who said, man, I've been using porn forever, never had any problems. But when I started using tube sites about a year later, I couldn't get it up anymore. So is your problem exclusively with online pornography, sort of the social media era porn, or um, would you still say that there are negative consequences to the traditional, you know, penthouse magazine or pornography DVD? Well, I think you have to sort of separate the DVD. So if we look at something like a penthouse or if you look at Playboy, think about a 13-year-old boy. All he can do is look at a picture of a naked woman. What could he think of? Maybe feeling her boobs up? Who knows what? <laughs> But now a 13-year-old goes to a porn site and he sees the hardest of the hardcore porn and he looks at it and masturbates to it every day for about six years before he actually kisses a girl. So he's training his sexuality in two ways. The first way is that's how I should do it. Right. And it replaces his imagination. The, th the next thing is I need everything associated with my porn use to become aroused. And number one, that's watching other people do it, or I need to click from video to video, or I need to go through about 20 videos and find the perfect shot to end on right. for, in order to orgasm. So that's the game changer. Uh, is it possible that this generally would only affect outliers, people with addictive personalities who would have the same proclivities with any sort of chemical or, or practice that is addictive? There's no such thing as the addictive personality. There are certain traits that lead to a higher percentage of those people becoming addicted. For example, depression. So depression, 
people who are depressed, they have a higher chance, but the vast majority of people who are depressed never become truly addicted. Okay. And what we have now is something completely different. We have adolescents using porn, internet porn, for nearly every masturbation session. If we had, for example, adolescents starting age 12, drinking alcohol or smoking cigarettes right at that age or using cocaine every day, there would be a much higher percentage who would end up being addicted and having a hard time stopping. So we're having now something unique where adolescents are using it most every day, adolescent boys that are. We've seen studies now since our first interviews, uh, there, there's been a lot of discussion, particularly in the media, about Facebook social media and the same addictive patterns being developed yes. uh, with that. So is it possible that it's just sort of the medium itself as opposed to the content? Well, uh, you can become addicted to certainly the medium of the internet. On my site, I have 220 internet addiction brain studies, and all of them show the same brain changes as seen in substance addicts. So it is a real thing. And also on the, my front page, I have 34 uh, brain studies on porn users, and all of them are consistent with the addiction model. So even though you can become addicted to Facebook, think about it, Facebook, what is it? Words, pictures? You don't, that's something new. Why would you become addicted to words and pictures? Well, it's the novelty. It's the ability to constantly switch from something new, something new, something new. And what does novelty do? Well, novelty actually increases dopamine in the reward center. So every little time you're anticipating going to a new tweet or a new Facebook picture, you get a little shot of dopamine. If you do that hours and hours, you train your brain to sort of want that, to yeah. crave that, and other brain changes can in, ensue. Yeah. And I, well, I would also say, uh, to be fair, with Facebook or Twitter social media, a lot of times these words or these pictures represent, you know, a, a emotive responses, right? Whether it's, oh, your friend's vacation or relationship status, it makes them feel important. I think that's what's attached to it. And then uh, what could possibly elicit a more powerful emotional response in many people than than sex, right? So I, I would seem like it's a significantly worse degree. Yeah, I think you know the difference between having a mind-blowing orgasm and looking at a picture of a sunset on a beach. So there is a <laughs> yeah. difference in the brain. Yes. And that difference is in neurochemicals. A massive amount of dopamine, a massive amount of endorphins are released. And what is the number one purpose for every organism? to reproduce. So you have huge sections of the human brain devoted to sexual arousal and reproduction, and those can be hijacked and molded, especially during adolescence, through watching hardcore streaming porn. I guess at this point there couldn't really be long-term studies since, like you said, two sites have been created in 2007. Would there be any comparable long-term studies that might show people the consequences, for example, like development of, of mental illness, could be ADHD, could be depression? Do we know if there's any kind of um, association there? You know, there's very, I can only think of really one long-term study on porn users. It was actually 12 and 13 year olds, and they're looking at academics, and they found that those that use more porn uh, six months later than a year later, they did far worse on their academics. So that's the only longitudinal study I've seen. And that could on be carpal tunnel though as well. Um, <laughs> so for these people watching at 2 a.m., if they're looking for help, uh, if they feel as though, listen, I'm kind of in a rut and you know, it's, it's a catch 22, they need to use pornography. What, what can they do? What resources do they have? Well, they can go to my site, and it's a non-commercial site, and we have a list of resources. We have all sorts of material. They can then go to forums where there's lots of guys, mostly who are trying to quit porn. So there's been a real explosion in forums where guys are trying to quit. And it's what's interesting is these forums are largely non-religious. In fact, one did a survey. It's called nofap.com, and 60% of the users were atheists or agnostics. So a lot of men are starting to see that it's having negative effects. So there's lots of resources, and you can go to my site and then I can channel, channel you into all those resources. So I think a lot of people who aren't addicted or don't feel they're addicted are seeing what it feels like to take a break. 
And since a lot of them have grown up using, even if they're 30, 35 years old, this is the first time they've taken a break from porn for an extended period. And in that, they're discovering, my goodness, something is going on here. Thank you so much, Mr. Wilson, for coming back. And uh, we have to have you, it's been too long. We'll have to have you back regularly because we get so much feedback. Yourbrainonporn.com is a site or the book. If you like this video, subscribe by clicking the subscribe button. It's, at, it's in a, it's a circle now. It used to be a square, which most buttons aren't squares. Unless it's on a phone. There are square buttons on phones, but most buttons are circles. You understand what I'm talking about. Or watch the recommended video, which is popping up in a box. Or subscribe at ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club. Join the mug club so you can get the daily show. And that means that you are not beholden to the YouTube censoring overlords. But let's be honest. You like being there where you are, under their thumb. Power bottom you.